Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we have quite a few interesting things to talk about but we will start with a physique update of Blessing of Oribu about a week out of Indie Pro and we have never seen Blessing this shredded and not just this shredded for this point of prep for a week out but this shredded period not just at one week out but also he was probably the best that he ever looked uh, two weeks out you can see what Blessing looks right now, and this looks like he pretty much peaked. So I have no idea what George Ferrer's protocols look like, what is his game plan, uh, is he planning on just cruising and not doing anything drastic in the final days of the week. Usually bodybuilders dehydrate the last day or two, and they before that they, they, they deplete from the glycogen and then they carb load. Some of them don't even do the, the depletion and the carb load, but they usually fill up with carbs at least a little bit in the end, and most of them dehydrate. And if that is the case with Blessing, if that's his game plan, on the day of the show, he's going to look even crazier than this. And this looks like he pretty much peaked. So, I mean, this is still just a photo, this is not on stage, but hey, he looks absolutely amazing here. So even at this point, one week out, he looks freaking shredded. He's freaking lean. And not just shredded, but he is also really big as well. So he never really had this kind of fullness combined with this conditioning. So George Farah, whatever the hell George Farah is doing to him, it's working. So George Farah proved it to us that he is a good freaking coach, apparently. So Blessing is bringing his best shape ever, no doubt. And how well can he do if he brings his absolute best, if he brings his A game? Can he win this show? I think he can. I think there's a possibility. Yeah, sure. This Indie Pro is pretty much wide open. Like anybody in that top 5, top 6 can win. Most likely, most likely it's going to be Justin Rodriguez and he's probably going to be battling uh, Charles Griffin. You know, those are the top dogs, but this guy, for example, you know, I wouldn't say he's an underdog, but he was never like a pro show winner, he never really got close to winning a show, and this time, this year, that might change. I can definitely see him winning this show with this look. I mean, just look at his side abs, how sharp they look, and also like how big he is. So he probably added some muscle in the offseason and he didn't lose any. Last time he was prepping with uh, Chad Nichols, he had to go really low on calories for a long time and he was probably doing a lot of cardio. He talked about this and he thinks he lost a lot of muscle. This time around, he lost zero muscle and he probably gained quite a few pounds in the offseason. And with this condition that he's about to bring... This is going to be a serious package, guys. This is going to be a breakthrough year for Blessing. I can feel it. I can see it. And can he win in the pro? It's a possibility. What do you guys think? Before we move on, I just want to tell you guys about the classic creatine by the old school labs. If you guys want to try this creatine, click on the link in the description of this video. Use the code EVAN for a 12% discount. So if you guys want to support my channel, go ahead and give it a try. What is different about this creatine is that it also has a probiotic in it. So it's going to help the absorption too. Alright, next let's talk about Hare Japan real quick. So this is the video that you already saw, I know. I posted this on my channel a couple of videos ago, I'm not sure. But what is interesting is that Ian Valier on Fuad Abiyad's podcast, in their most recent podcast, basically said that this doesn't look very impressive to him. I don't know what Ian was looking, what did he see in this, but you know, sometimes I agree with the guy, sometimes I don't. And this time around I don't agree with Ian at all. To me this looks really freaking impressive and what Ian said, I can't play the video for you unfortunately because I know Fuad copyrighted somebody on YouTube and I don't want that to happen to me. Uh, what Ian said is basically the legs are very impressive as they are insane, but he said that his upper body, Hadi's upper body isn't really looking that great. I don't know if Hadi is watching the podcast but he made a video where you can see only his upper body and Tell me guys, what do you think? Is this unimpressive to you? <laughs> Come on, this looks absolutely ridiculous. With this small waist, with this freaking popping lats and the arms also look great with a peak on the biceps, the chest looks wide and full and the shoulders also look great. Like the aesthetics of his physique with all this mass, it just looks so impressive, it looks so freaking great. 
and he looks great for the offseason too, like his body fat percent is just where it needs to be, uh, he's improving, I'm sure, look at the side abs here, and like the arms and shoulders, just an impressive freaking physique, man, just crazy, crazy stuff, many people thought that he should have won the Mr. Olympia last year, or at least place second, and uh, not just the fans, not just the hardcore Iranian fans, but other competitors too, like Nick Walker, Nick Walker thinks that Harry should have placed higher, and I get it, like Mr. Olympia, if it's all equal, or pretty much equal, the bigger guy will win, and Hadi, he has so much muscle on his frame, but his frame is not really that big, like he's a short guy, he came from 212, you guys know that, so even though in this particular photo he looks just as big, it's just the angle, you know, he's a little bit smaller, uh, and, uh, you know, he lost last year, but I don't know for how long these guys can keep up with him, because if he keeps coming like this condition, then better, like bigger and fuller, you know, he might edge them out, because he looks really, really good. Back to what Ian said, he doesn't find his upper body very impressive, you know, it's his opinion, he can think whatever he wants, you know, if he sees it that way, that's okay, all we can do is agree or disagree, but I'm looking at this video and I'm thinking, can he actually win the Mr. Olympia? He looks very complete, he looks great, and I'm just curious, is it only the height, or is it what everybody is saying, that he stuffed his arms and his delts with oil, with sintel? Is that really true, though? Can the judges see that on stage? I don't know, I'm sure their trained eye can notice it if it's happening, but in this video, I don't know if you can see that, but there is one moment, take a look at this moment. Front double bicep, it all looks fine, his arms don't look uh, sintelish, but when he puts them down, when he tries to do the front lat spread, take a look at the right arm especially, and the shoulder. Does it look a little bit suspicious to you? Look again, pay attention to the bicep, and also compare the size of it to the forearms. Look at it here, when he moves them. Does it look a little bit weird, a little bit suspicious? I don't know, it does to me, at least, a little bit. I don't know, I'm not the expert, but the judges are experts, and if they can see it, that can put him down a couple of spots. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, next we have Goodwit, oh, look at how big this guy is doing these flies, and now when he hits the pose, wow, look at this front double bicep, this is, this is exceptional, this is something you don't see very often, I know the lighting is flattering, and I don't know if he's a master poser, he, need, he knows how to find the angles and how to hit the poses and he can find good lighting, is that all it is, or is he simply that freaking impressive? I guess we won't know until we see him on stage compared to the other pros, uh, I think his plan is now officially to try and win a pro card in MPC and then do the IV Pro League, uh, I can't wait to see him compared to the other pros because to me at least in these photos and videos that he's posting, he looks probably more impressive than almost all of those guys, <laughs> at least to me he looks like a top 6, top 5 material. I don't know, it's probably not the case, it's usually not the same thing, you know, Instagram and reality, but that's what it looks like, and that's why I want to see that on stage. I'm sure all of you guys would love to see that as well, and for now, he looks absolutely amazing, and I can't wait to see him conditioned and to see the final package, that's going to be ridiculous, and soon enough I'm gonna see him on that uh, pro stage against the other top pros. Good Vito is not like the other top European bodybuilder, Mikael Krizio. Mikael Krizio looks amazing, mainly off stage, at the expos and stuff like that. On stage, he doesn't really look like a pro, like an IBB Pro League top competitor. But Vitali, Good Vito, he does, however. I think he would do really well against the other top pros, and I guess we'll find out soon enough. Alright, next we have an update of Horse MD. Uh, this is a photo of him after the Arnold Classic Brazil, where he was basically circling around at the expo. He was walking, he wasn't probably, you know, eating uh, properly the way he should and training and everything. And this is after all that stuff he says in the description here. I Google translated this. But what is more important here is his weight. So, at seven and a half weeks out of Expo Super Show, he's 114 kilos, and his height, he also told us his height, he's 184 centimeters. 
184 centimeters is 6 foot, a little bit over 6 foot. And here are the weight caps for the IBB Professional League. And if you are over 6 foot as he is, he can weigh up to 230 pounds. Currently, he is 250 pounds. And he does look quite a bit bodybuilderish, right? I mean, he doesn't really look much like a classic guy. He looks still pretty big. And how much he needs to lose in seven and a half weeks, which is almost two months, he needs to lose 20 pounds. That's nothing. He can do that. Like, he's in a pretty good shape, sure. And he will probably have to burn a little bit of muscle. But if he comes completely diced and dehydrated and everything, if he makes the weight... It's gonna be not a problem, 20 pounds, it's not much from this point, with this conditioning. So, it's not a lot at all, he can make the weight, and he looks like this. So that's going to be very interesting, seeing this guy, this guy that turned pro in open bodybuilding last year, compete in the classic physique, looking jacked, big like this. I don't know man, it seems like these classic physique guys are getting bigger and bigger because <laughs> Urs Kalecinski here, the miracle bear, absolutely dwarfed Nick Walker. Look at this, <laughs> this looks so funny. Nick is literally like the biggest, one of the biggest bodybuilders, open bodybuilders today. Like it's him, Big Rami, maybe a couple of other guys, but he's up there, like he's one of the biggest, the most impressive, the freakiest looking bodybuilders with insane legs, with one of the biggest arms measurement up there on that stage. And this is what he looks like standing next to Urs. And Nick needs to work, he needs to seriously work on his out angling game because he's not doing very well. Even Sean Clarita did much better job, like he didn't really get dwarfed. But Nick absolutely did. Look at him. He looks like a child standing next to a classic guy. I mean, I, I get it. It's awesome for him that he's not insecure about his size. That, you know, he I mean, he won the Arnold Classic and he plays fifth at the Mr. Olympia. And everybody knows that he's a big bodybuilder. But he doesn't need these photos circling around. He really doesn't need a classic guy making an open bodybuilder look small. And also, Nick is a short guy, very short, so some people who never really saw these open bodybuilders in person will think, how big are they really? Like, if they're very short, maybe they're not really that big, even in person, maybe they just look big on stage, and that is somewhat true. Usually, you get disappointed when you see these um, open bodybuilders who are really massive in person, but the ones that are short. You know, guys like, I don't know, Steve Kuklo, Regan Grimes, uh, Sergio Oliva, those guys are a little bit taller. And when they are, let's, let's say, at least above 5 foot 9, they look impressive in person. But Nick is like, I don't know, 5 foot 6 or 7. So he is very short and uh, uh, he is enormous. He is 290, like that's really big. And if he just posed a little bit differently here, he would look very massive, but he didn't do that, he didn't bother, and so there is this photo, Urs absolutely killed him, he out-angled him like crazy, he dwarfed the guy, so I guess Nick just needs to work on his out-angling game, <laughs> unless he does that, this is going to keep happening, maybe he doesn't care at all, so whatever, <laughs> anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this video, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys, thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.